Our next speaker is uh, Martin. I think you know very well. A uh, researcher at Free University of Berlin. She's working with Riot for its predecessor for over 10 years now. And she's put a lot of her work in. Did it go again? In Riot. And today she's talking about DNS over co -op. Um, So you've heard a lot about co -op. Um, I propose to have encrypted name resolution in the Internet of Things. Take it away. So, um, yeah, as uh, Michael already said, uh, and as you saw already, those who were at, at the lunch break, um, so in my uh, demo, I am talking about DNS over co-op. Um, so the first question is, why do we need it? Um, as, so I will give my motivation, then uh, tell you how DNS over co-op works how uh, it was integrated into Riot. Um, then I go a little bit of a detour and uh, go into the state of co-op at the moment in Riot and uh, my wish list for co-op in Riot <laughs> and then into the next steps. So the motivation is, I think, clear. We uh, have an IoT device which wants to do a DNS request and we have some evil eavesdropper in it that in the middle that uh, uh, can then read the DNS requests and read the DNS responses. And the typical countermeasure we do for that is of course that we encrypt the name resolution that is triggered by the IoT device. Um, and of course there are already existing solutions like for example, DNS over HTTPS or DNS over TLS, but also quite recently DNS over QUIC and if we want to go into the more datagram based uh, uh, communications, also DNS over DTLS. However, the problem with uh, the first two is that they use TCP, which uh, conflicts with our resource constraint. Yes, we had the, this nice talk yesterday that it's possible, uh, but um, for example, if we look into LPVAN, we still, for, or LoRaWAN, we still have these problems as well. Um, similar uh, conflicts we have with TLS over UDP and with DNS over DTLS, we have uh, actually this pass MTU problem, which is pointed out in the RC that uh, with the, if, if the packet gets larger than the PD uh, MTU, uh, we can't send the packet. And uh, also this increases with constraint link layer PDUs because we want to actually keep the packets rather small. So our proposal is DNS over co-op, um, which we actually also provided a draft already for. Um, and uh, this draft actually yesterday was accepted by the working group. Um, so, yeah. Um, and with DNS over co-op, we can basically do encrypted communication either using DTLS or you, uh, if we want to be a little bit, bit more lightweight using OSCOR. Um, there we had just had a nice talk how this could be used then. and what future uh, benefits we can also gain from that. Um, we also have blockwise transfer to overcome the uh, pass MTU problem uh, we have with uh, DNS over DTLS. And we also just share the system uh, resources with a co-op application. So we have smaller uh, uh, applications in total um, because we can use the same buff socket and buffer and uh, also can reuse a co-op uh, retransmission mechanism. And as an additional benefit, if the traffic is encrypted, it, the DNS traffic is just mixed in with application traffic. <laughs> Sorry. So um, how does DNS over co-op work? Um, we could just uh, do it like DOH and just put it into the get or post request. Um, but uh, there is a problem that only the get method is cacheable. Um, and, but for the post method, uh, we have the problem that the, uh, for, for the get method, we also have the problem that the uh, data can't carry, be carried in the uh, body. Uh, so um, we have to encode it in a, in, in a uh, query option. And also because it's not ca be able to carry it in the body, uh, we can't use a uh, uh, blockwise transfer with the get for the query. Um, so, but the nice thing about co-op, there's also the fetch method, which was introduced in RFC 8132, which basically offers the best of both, wor both worlds because it's cacheable and uh, the application data can be carried in the body of the request. And uh, so we also can use blockwise transfer. 
Um, so basically how it then looks like is basically that the uh, doc client does a co-op request, puts the DNS query in the body of the fetch request, and then that is uh, sent to a doc server. So rather straightforward, and that doc server either then has the data already or requests it from an upstream DNS server. Um, so yeah. Um, and uh, we ev did some evaluation on that, which I didn't want to go deeper into this talk. Um, but uh, if you want to read on this, I have a, a paper uh, published on archive. Um, maybe if there's time later, I can also show some results. I prepared some slides for that, but yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, how did I integrate this into Riot? So uh, actually there was already a DNS over UDP uh, implementation existing, which basically was built on top on, of SOC and this DNS message and cache layer, well, the cache layer was introduced later, but <laughs> it's uh, building up on that. Um, and I also for uh, evaluation purposes implemented a DNS over DTLS uh, uh, in implementation. And uh, then on top of GCoop, I built DNS over Coop. And for our evaluation, of course, we wanted to have also Oscar support. And but that uh, I rather just patched in. <laughs> so um, yeah, there is a branch in my fork for that uh, where you can have a look how I did it. But it's basically just having a completely different code branch for the Oscar stuff. And uh, yeah, if you want to basically just use it, you can, um, it's already part of the current Riot version. So it's uh, part of Riot since the uh, 2022.07 release. Uh, you just add uh, GCorp DNS to your make file, then uh, set the URI for the server. And then you can basically just qu start querying the DNS name in your application using GCorp DNS query. And as of, uh, two, so, uh, as of the next release, there will also be a generalized DNS query, which as long as there's configuration for either DNS or uh, doc, you can just request the name. And then if you have a doc server configured, have uh, DNS over core instead of DNS. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, as you may have saw in my, uh, in my implementation, there are some open questions when I finish my implementation. Uh, for example, how to provide native and easy support for LibOSCO so that it's transparent for the user or the programmer. Um, uh, how to provide non-UDP transport, because at the moment we just have go up over UDP and go up over DTLS. Uh, and I'm, I, I was a bit wondering when I looked at GCoop for and after a while, uh, how we will implement that. And then lastly is uh, if GCoop is still the API that I would use for such application. And I think I, for that, I need to go a little bit deeper into the history of <laughs> Coop in Riot. Um, because um, as may, some of you may remember, we had this, um, this somewhat of a battle uh, in 2015 to 2016, where multiple co-op implementations were proposed to Riot, and basically uh, on on top came out uh, Nano Co-op as a thin co-op message parser and compositor with some limited communication abilities, uh, and uh, G Co-op on top of that uh, as a full featured co-op library, which was uh, back then spearheaded by Ken Bannister. Um, and then suit came along and people wanted to have a bootloader, which has, uh, has a very small binary. And so, uh, NanoCorp was used for that to allow for OTA updates. And, um, that resulted in blockwise transfer being implemented in NanoCorp. And, but it was also usable, of course, with GCorp because GCorp was just building on top of NanoCorp. But then uh, Ken also had to sadly cease Riot development. And so there was re really no more uh, full-time GCoop ma maintainership. So, um, but then we still got a co-op support for GCoop. Um, but we also decided on the Riot Summit, okay, because we don't have this full-time uh, GCoop ma maintainership anymore. How about we, uh, rework the co-op API a bit. And um, we got to the consensus that we either clean up GCoop, that we have a more usable API, 
or build a new API from the ground up. But then for some reason, NanoCoop gains more various new features in the last year, uh, which are on par with GCoop. And I heard even that there are now future ideas for having native co-op support in uh, nano socks. So, and, and then also from the side, <laughs> LibOSCO is creeping in and uh, there's no real, real way to, at the moment, to have it natively supported somehow. And so my question was, after all of this, are we still doing this, what we uh, decided at the last summit? Um, yeah. So... <laughs> Th that's maybe another open question uh, on that topic. And so basically, if we are doing still doing this, or if we maybe go into the direction that Nano Co-op is now the new API, uh, I, my wish list for Riot with Co-op would be that we have some more abstract option composing, which would also be important for OSCO and LibOSCO, so that we don't have to add the um, options in the order that they are defined in the RFC, because at least I always have to look up in the RFC, okay, with, or in the header file, which option do I need first? And okay, but now in this case, I have to also add a proxy option, for example, and then I have to have a diff completely different branch for this. And yeah, I find it rather ergonomically that those have to be added and maybe we should have some uh, way to have it in a different order because for our score, um, we also have to resort them because some need to be in inner and outer, so uh, 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 encrypted and not encrypted. And uh, because, because and this also results that memmove needs to be used in libosco, which isn't that nice. So yeah, so some abstracted ways to compose the options uh, with uh, the new API would be nice. Then a way to abstract the blockwise transfer, because at the moment we have this uh, um uh we have this uh split what is it called uh splitter no the slicer yeah the slicer um where you uh have to basically iterate over the package yourself and i didn't really find out what the correct stop condition is for that and it looked really weird when i found it out and it yeah, so maybe have just set, have something like uh, libcoops uh, at data large, where you basically just add the payload in bulk, and then something in the background is responsible to make the blockwise requests and responses. Um, and uh, yeah, also like some first level URI CRI support that you don't have to put the remote and the pass and the query into the uh, into the request yourself just give it a uri or a cri and be done with it and of course abstracted osco support uh, ideally in a nicely uh, abstracted way like we have with gcoop dtls now so yeah um and i looked a little bit into what my wish list would uh, uh um result in when we want to consolidate the apis uh, so on the one hand side, we have nano coop if you want to extend it to be more full fledged like GCoop. And on the other side, we have what we have, uh, how it would be for GCoop. And um, yeah, we see some of the stuff is already implemented. Some um, like abstracted op option composing is probably uh, equally difficult because we just use the option parser of uh, nano coop for GCoop. Um, as such uh, the gcoop uh, blockwise transfer might be not that hard either uh, i guess um, for the uh, uri support that would be pretty low because we have a uri parser we just need to use it in gcoop um, oscar support because of the option reordering there needs to be f in both cases a lot of stuff done so uh, it's done like i like it to be um, and for other transports, I think, but that is more like a, that might be me more medium for lower layer stuff. Um, I think in nano co-op is a little bit higher than having it in, in uh, G-co-op. And yeah, for, for detail as support, we basically need to do everything what we did for G-co-op already in nano co-op again. So I said it's probably rather high effort. Um, so yeah, uh, in I don't really mind if we now go full nano co-op, but I think from my list of results, uh, it might be clear that it's maybe better to stick G co-op or clean G co-op up or find something better. 
Um, but yeah, uh, maybe we can discuss this after my talk. Um, but uh, go, coming back to DNS over co-op, <laughs> um, so the next steps for that will be that we do, will do some further evaluation um, on co-op DNS and caching. Um, we also plan to have some compressed or SIBO based content format to represent DNS messages so we can get smaller DNS message because fragmentation is still a big problem um, with DNS and um, also some way to uh, facilitate DNS push over co-op observe. So um, yeah, that's basically from my side. So do you have any questions? <laughs> Yes, Ben. Yeah, um, actually, just just two things. I mean, firstly, um, I think completely abstracting away the blockwise uh, will not work so well because it's not only about uh, fitting the packets into a small MTU, um, not but also about conserving RAM. So usually, you don't have all the response in RAM, but might write, read it from a file system or um, yeah, write it to, to MTD or something like that. So it would probably not be so so easy to abstract it more than it is already abstracted. Um, but even then you can just continue sending or sending some function like that yeah. uh, when, when it's just about RAM. Yeah, or maybe a callback could also work. Yeah. Like I think, but, but yeah. And I also, um, uh, I, I don't see it so bad that we have two implementations as long as they share code um, because um, having like you don't need all the features of gcorp sometimes if you just have a simple sensor and post some some measurements you don't want to have yeah gcorp sometimes a bit a bit heavy i mean i actually don't really know how how much it differs in resource consumption just just looking at the api um so it's a bit more hassle but as you said we could clean it up of course um but but the GCorp API is sometimes a bit more baroque than NanoCorp, so yeah, that's my, my yes. main reason why I why I, I stick to with with NanoCorp for for some but things. To me, that sounds more like you would be rather see NanoCorp grow and GCorp not be used anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have I don't have anything against GeoCorp. It's also great as a as a as a co-op server, mm. uh, where NanoCorp is, is really really basic and quite lacking in some some regards. But um, yeah, I, I think they don't have to compete. They can just fill fill different roles and we share. I mean, the co whole parsing code is already shared. It's just yeah. The, I mean, the thing is that it's uh, what what I was trying to get as I said, it's about implementation time and manpower. And if we focus on two APIs, then Probably both APIs never will be like uh, that full featured. So yeah. I'm not sure if it's I can uh, co-sign that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kasper wanted to say something. I, I I just say that it was less effort adding new features to uh, to NanoCorp than to GCorp. So maybe that was more about conserving manpower than than doing okay. the other way around. Yeah. As far as I remember, the main reason for the split was that um, there were features required of, of co-op that made uh, compromises necessary. Like, for example, yeah. GCorp, in order to, to support observe, needs a thread and a lot of handling code and stuff. So because we, I didn't want to have the thread in NanoCorp because I thought, yeah, maybe the super low power device without memory, right? So that's mm -hmm. why we have the split. And I think we actually decided that's that's fine, right? That was my, yeah, my I, takeaway. I, 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 I also thought it was fine as long as NanoCorp stayed the slow feature, but yeah. now I see this feature bloat suddenly in NanoCorp and I was a little bit worried or also confused. Is GCorp still the thing that I should use? So um, yeah, and if I'm confused as a long-time contributor, I, I, I don't want to imagine how it is for first-time contributors. So, but um, um, I think NanoCorp doesn't have anything against features. Features are nice, right? Yeah. But there are some kind of features that uh, that 
that that put bloat, for example, with this reordering stuff, which might uh, nest make uh, make a larger buffer necessary, right? And then Nanocore maybe chooses, okay, the API is a bit more clumsy. You have to add the options in the right order, but that means you don't need the stack space for the extra buffer for all the options that I you mean, might add, yeah. right? So you have to make this decision and so that we don't have- but This could also be something that you could add, uh, add optionally, like yeah. that you have this option compositor in Nanocore additionally or in G-Coop. Um, so, yeah. And actually with like the slicing, for example, I was surprised. <laughs> what did you wait, right? <laughs> oh, now it's back. Ah, yeah. um, the GCOP doesn't uh, expose the slicing because I thought it could be just used, right? Mm. Uh, so probably everybody who touches co-op just chooses the implementation that makes it most easy to add to this feature, right? I, I think know. it's also like what the examples provide because the examples just do it like that. And so people just copy it from the examples and then, yeah. So uh, Christian is raising his hand. Yeah? Can you talk this time? Okay, yeah. We don't hear you, sadly. Yeah, um, Zoom is ah. again not switching over between the inputs, sorry. Um, and apologies for not having anything valuable to contribute to the DNS part, but still picking on the uh, on the two curve stacks part. Could you go back to the slide uh, showing the both stacks? Um, which slide? Yeah. No, the okay. forward. No, forward. One, three more. Yes, that, that okay. one. So the light I was on. <laughs> no, one earlier. One earlier. Okay. Um, I I think that's something that we should um when whatever what however we continue with our stacks. Uh, one earlier, please. Um, eleven. Hmm? Ah, yeah, eleven. I don't see the, Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, one one Sorry. item that we should, when, whenever we think about how we continue with our stacks, we should put on here is um, RFC 7252 uh, compliance, because I think that there are a few things where we rely a lot on the application to do things that the application doesn't really practically do. Uh, yep. For example, in terms of um, frequency of requests resulting in, in um, applications completely sidestepping uh, the limitations that Coop is built around, and if we add it, um, make sure that these constraints are observed uh, to the as a row here. I think in Nano Coop it would be much harder to ensure that these are met than in G Coop. So that's that's something I think we should keep in mind, and also people should keep in mind when picking one of these. Um, that some things should really be observed by the application, even though we don't have good text on that yet. Yep. <laughs> and anyone wants to add something to that? <laughs> okay. Uh, any further questions? Okay. Thank you.